Hi, everyone, and welcome to the All Things ITSM Global podcast, coming to you from Fusion 15 in New Orleans. I'm Kirsty McGowan. I'm here with Matt Hooper. Hey, Kirsty. Gerard Green. Kirsty, hello. And Suresh GP. And as we just decided we've got a bit of an interesting group here. We've made, <laughs> we've made some real role changes, I guess, over, we over the years. We've, yeah. we've all sort of swapped around, me and yeah. Gerard, and... Yeah, we've, we're looking at analysts moving to vendors, the consultants moving to vendors, vendors moving to, to consultancy. <laughs> and I mean, and I've done some weird stuff moving from journalism to service management to consultancy. Redefining and, ourselves. And sort mm -hmm. of getting now into marketing spaces and that. Yeah. So, so we've, we've all changed things. So I guess we're talking about the, the portability of our, our skills and the way they can move around. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. And career-wise, career ITU seems an interesting place. And I think it's a, it's, a, it's a great place to be in because one of the advantages of being in these conferences is because you, you talk with different people in different zones and you know mm. a bit of the other ones, mm -hmm. though you're not experienced, yeah, right. which gives you the kind of cushion. Mm. When I, I decided to step out of HP to be on my own, one of the things is, you know, where do I start? Right. It is very easy for me because coming and attending a lot of this conference, talking with vendors and consultants, it is not a big, big game changer you know exactly you're playing different roles. It's a part of the same ecosystem. So it is right. pretty naturally fitting yeah. into the whole group. Yeah, I think having been in, because I had the pleasure of going and staying with Suresh in India for a, for a while to do some training, and I think the, the Indian ITSM scene is really quite uh, different to, to what the, the rest of us are used to too. So it's, it's emerging and flourishing. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's, yeah. It's, uh, it, it takes some time to actually uh, build up the uh, momentum, but mm. once it makes sense, it's just like flourishing and because yeah. you have the huge subscriber mm -hmm. base in yes. kind of a big nation. Mm. Um, but then how do you really bring those, uh, uh, you know, uh, value in terms of customers and stuff like that, which is a take of this, but the traditionally focusing on outsourcing business. Yes. Yeah. Right. So that's been the key in which India or China have been identified as part of major players. Yeah. But I think slowly we'll get in there in terms of service. Well, management. I think you had the unique perspective too, being on the product side. So you know, you're you're where I was, right? You were con you're consulting now, but you were on the product side. You were meeting with all these customers, and you knew what your technology could do, but you also knew the tool is only going to do so much. Right. Yeah. Like, oh, I could help them. I could yeah. help them with that, right? So you saw the opportunity and, and, and capitalized on it yeah. in, in the relationships you had. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I think it's it's very critical, and, and even now. A bit of my thing is on training on products. Mm -hmm. And one of the things is because you have implemented that, mm -hmm. you are able to really have a meaningful dialogue mm -hmm. with the customers. And that's yeah. what they wanted. It's quite priceless. So it really yeah. works well. It's different. It's that same relationship of, you know, as a Gartner, I had the opportunity. I talked to so many customers, yeah. but product agnostic. Mm. So their, their concerns were based around the people and the process element. They needed some guidance on technology. But... You're, you're vendor agnostic on the Gartner side, and you're more prone to say, okay, it's really about these things. And then you get the technology view from all the vendors who are kind of giving you their best foot, their best demonstration, mm -hmm. their best demo. And so it's this really interesting intersection. And now coming over to the vendor side, it's, it's using that information from what customers have wanted to feed into product management, right? So being an arm to development and saying, listen, this is what customers say they want, or this is where customers get let down by vendors. We need to build this capability, or we need to think about how we solve for these challenges. So that intersection, when you come to a conference like this, we're all sitting around exactly. swapping notes. We're yeah. all looking out the same window. Mm. I've said, we've, how long have we known each other? Right? We've been with these so many yeah. times. And it's, you've seen this, yep, I see that, I see that. And it's this great opportunity to swap notes. And it's, it's competitive, but it's all for the betterment yeah. of, of this industry. And yeah. I, think I think that's the yeah, key. Yeah, there is a real community feeling. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter that, I mean, your land desk, your share well, mm -hmm. it does. And it, it makes no difference. You, you still sit around and you talk about right. what's actually good for the for the industry and for the community mm -hmm. as a whole, rather than what's good for your individual right. products. And you, Kirsty, for that matter, you have been uh, international editor for ITSM of International mm -hmm. and now doing writing and blogs mm -hmm. and, and stuff, podcasts. How, how has that journey in to it? It's, it's been, a, I mean, I've had a really interesting, interesting journey because I came, I was a daily newspaper journalist, I mean, and I somehow fell into service management quite accidentally. <laughs> and, and, and I found I was actually quite good at it. So. But now I've, I've managed to sort of come full circle and, and be able to use my service management skills and my writing skills and combine them together, which has been absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. What's interesting for me is, you know, I've been an ITSM practitioner for 20 years mm. and actually, you know, implementing processes yep. and, and coding tools and, and implementing mm. products. In all the roles that I've had, I've always blogged and I've always yep. tweeted and spoke at events and those are all things mm. that I wanted to do personally mm. and funded personally. And the interesting thing with Landesk was is 
that's what they wanted to pay me for. Uh, like all the other yeah. skills that Sweet. I have are just kind of like an ancillary benefit. Mm. You know, so I, yeah. I, I get there and I'm like, well, do you want me to help with you know strategy and architecture or no, fix no, no. things? No, we just no, want no. you to write no. stuff and talk to people. Yeah. Yeah. Like, awesome, really? isn't it? Yeah. That's like, this is the best yeah. thing for you, <laughs> yeah. what you love yeah. to do, and you get paid for doing that. Yeah. So. <laughs> it, it, you know, it's yeah. like that old expression, you know, you do what you love and you don't work a day in your life. So it's kind of it's kind of like that. But it is it is a challenge though, like with, with ShareWell, because they're singularly focused on service management, that's an interesting thing, mm -hmm. because your dynamic and your experience, you can bring the, the market perspective, competitive intelligence, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. With me, the, the, we have several suites, and so I have, I have the challenge of mind share oh, yeah. battle internally, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, which is, which is it's a good challenge for me, uh, but uh, it does make it a difference mm -hmm. for like, I can't really affect a lot of things. I can only influence the way they position service management. Right. Because we felt, Landesk definitely fell into that trap of like, they called it Landesk Service Desk as a product. Yep. So everybody in there thought it was a service desk product. Mm -hmm. It was like a help desk product. Right. It's like, no, that's like a point of sale system right. being yeah. retail management. Yeah. There's, there's, there's so much more right. here, yes. that, you know? Yeah. Right. So it is still, you know, even even on the product side, vendor side, it, we, we have a challenge too on the product side that I'm seeing, like with consultants I got, as a consultant, I was like, stop calling it a service catalog. It's not a service catalog. It's a request catalog. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You know, mm. you're to blame here. That's not what ITIL says, not what the industry right. says. You know, and so internally, you know, mm -hmm. I'm trying to change the language. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, it's, so. it's, it's all marketing, right? It comes back to that. And we've all touched it from different avenues. We've had products that we've had to market. We've had products we've had to sell. Now we have products mm. we're trying to, uh, to raise awareness around. And you do play that game of, okay, here's what the industry says, but here's what the search terms are. SEO yeah. is kind of my guide here yeah. and that's that's new mm -hmm. and so to kind of understand those dynamics is interesting because you you, you want to understand what's best for the community but then at the same time you're looking to say okay what words and terms are going to resonate with these buyers who are looking for solutions how do yeah. we get on that first page of google those are all kind of new elements to mm -hmm. this that you know i wasn't going to get a gartner but so glad i'm getting yeah. on, on this side i do have to ask what's it like to brief gartner <laughs> <laughs> you're at Sherwell. it's uh, <laughs> It's interesting, you know, it's almost like, um, I think it's like an old Seinfeld joke where he talks about, it's like two magicians who date each other. <laughs> like, they, they know each other. Oh, you're going to pull the rabbit. Oh, okay, I see. All right, I got you. Yeah. So there's a little bit of that where it's just like, I understand what they're looking for, what they're looking to, to examine. But then at the same time, it's here's how we solve for it. Different than what you expect. And that, that can sometimes be a challenge. It's a great opportunity, um, but it isn't your standard kind of, Here's everything, lay it all out on the table. There's that element of, here's where our customers find value. They might not um, be the same customers that kind of swim in your pool, but we've done this and we've had success with it. And so trying to either change or shift that mindset can be a challenge, but one we look forward to. So one question is both uh, you know, Matt and uh, Gerard. For someone who's getting into this ITSM industry, he looks at um, uh, Matt a year back and he was different, and now he's in different companies, similar with Gerard. <laughs> so, if and it's a good news because there's a lot of versatility and people can do it. So, what would be your advice or thoughts for someone who's aspiring for um, service management space? You know, what's the kind of breadth and depth he can go in? You know, because I don't know, we are like just into this service management for about 10, 15 years. There's a lot of people are there. What kind of an advice would you uh, offer them for someone who's building their career yeah. in service management? For, for me, it would start with just having the, the marketing expertise. I know it sounds strange, but your ability to market yes. the value of IT to the business is critical. And it doesn't matter what tool you're on. It doesn't matter what process and methodologies you follow. If you can't describe what you do and how you do it consistently, it, it's all going to be for naught. So I, I would think about things from a marketing perspective um, if I'm getting started in service management. Okay. Yeah, you know, I, 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 I tell people service management really is about you know, decision making and understanding what activities you're doing and to make sure you're doing the right activities as fast as possible with as little risk, right? So if you can drive that across your organization, and that's why we're seeing the expansion of products going into HR facilities mm -hmm. and, and other customer service yes. oriented focuses, because really what it is, it's helping people understand what are the right decisions mm -hmm. and what are the right activities that we need to act on. So if you can develop those skills, analytical skills, communication skills, and how to show value, the marketing piece of it, those would be, those would be uh, universal skills mm -hmm. that could take you into many different opportunities. Mm -hmm. And you could fall into a line of business, yeah. Yeah. and that's okay. You haven't abandoned IT. You can actually mm -hmm. now be an advocate and, and, yeah. and, and yeah. leverage yeah, some I, of that learning. Yeah, I, that's what I was just thinking too. It's, it's all about flexibility too, and mm -hmm. there's no one size fits all. There's yeah. no wow. one 
set of skills that you can say that's the right set of skills for service management. I mean, right. when I, the different people I've worked with have come from so many different backgrounds. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was a journalist, but it, the skills I'd learnt in that, all about you know, deadlines, creativity, all the rest of it, that all fitted into service management well, so the well. The ability to write. I yeah. mean, that's so key, yeah. right? Yeah. The ability to put <laughs> together something yeah. that's thought-provoking, data-driven, mm. yeah. shareable, yeah. consumable. I mean, those, those yeah. things get overlooked, but mm. that's everything. Yeah. So. so, I mean, really, the, there is no ideal persona to work in service management. Yeah. It's, yeah. Agree. It's, anyone can get in there. Anybody. I think we can talk for hours. We yeah. could. Yeah. So I think we, we better we better stop now. But yeah. thanks, guys. It's been Thank a really good chat. Thanks, guys.